It's very so quiet in there. I know, it's so weird when there's a minute to spare. I'm like, we're there. staring at you, you're staring at us. Should Mayor. we just go? Should we, we start the meeting? I don't I'm know. just going to do it. Let's, let's call this meeting in order. I'd like to call the uh, Tuesday, October 1st, 2019, Oldsmar City Council meeting to order. The first two items on the agenda is the invocation and pledge of allegiance, which will be led by our city attorney, Mr. Tom Trask. Please rise. Our only Father, as citizens of the city of Oldsmar meet together to address our local concerns and opportunities. We give thanks to you for the bounty that we enjoy in all aspects of our community life. We ask for your inspiration to strive for excellence in our endeavors to serve the public and grant us peace in our world and harmony between all people to your greater glory. This we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to October. Good weather. It's really fall. It was a little nicer for a day or two. Well, Bucks won. Mm -hmm. The Rays are going to win tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, before we get started, I do want to recognize a guest that we have. He's going to be speaking a little bit later, and that's the Pinellas County Administrator, Barry Burton, who's here. Barry? <laughs> Thank you for coming out. Thank you. And, and for your wife coming, too. <laughs> I think he's been out making the rounds. All right, the next item on the agenda is the Citizens Open Forum. The only thing that we ask is that you not speak. Uh, well, wait, we don't have any public hearings tonight, too. Do we? Nope. Uh, All right, excellent. Nope. So speak about whatever you'd like, then. You mm -hmm. have five minutes. Uh, we ask you state your name and your address. Please include uh, your city as well. We don't assume that you live in the city of Oldsmar. I'm going to start on this side of the room. Is there anyone who'd like to uh, uh, say anything? Andrew? Mr. Knapp. Got a lot of stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much, mostly agenda. Uh, good evening, council members. My name is Andrew Knapp. I live at 314 Vista Cruiser Lane in Oldsmar. Uh, I've lived in Oldsmar for 34 years, in and around Oldsmar, for my whole life. And I'm excited, you know, that it's my hometown. I'm always sharing that with people that ask me where I live and I share it with enthusiasm. So in recent months and years, I've worked to be more immersed within the community and going so far as to serve on citizens advisory boards, in addition to just recently becoming the president of our HOA in Hayes Park Village. Um, with that being said, I'd like to take this opportunity to declare my candidacy for the upcoming vacancy to seat three um, due to Council Member McGee's resignation. I'm excited about the opportunity to serve both the citizens as well as, you know, just everyone outside of the city limits as well because it's being a representative of the city. I know that I have some big shoes to fill, uh, and if I'm elected, I'm definitely up for the challenge. Uh, in closing, I'd like to thank Councilmember Begee for her many years of service to our community. You've shown young people can and should serve in politics even at the local level. Uh, it's sad to see relocate, but Barcelona be, will be lucky to call you a resident of their own. So with that, I'd just like to say thank you and look forward to the upcoming challenge. Well, good job. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> well, Andrew, I know this, that uh, you know, we'll see who all runs, what all happens, but I know that the citizens would be well served by you. I believe that in my heart. So good for you. And I don't think Gabby's feet are really that big. So the shoe thing. <laughs> little shoes. Little shoes. You got little shoes to feel, but a big They're job nice to do. Shoes. Every woman likes to hear that. I'm sticking up for you, Gabby. <laughs> That's my vice mayor right there. On this side of the room, we have anyone who likes to uh, just <laughs> Our Lord, our poet laureate. Oh, here we go. Hello, Amanda, 135 East Lake Club Drive. I always love saying that my address is itself a poem. <laughs> So today's uh, poem is based on the events that are coming up this, uh, this coming weekend. I'm looking forward to attending uh, Celebrate Oldsmar. And what better way to celebrate Oldsmar than to write a poem about it? <laughs> <clears throat> celebrate Oldsmar. The mornings are brighter on this side of the state. The afternoons glimmering, the palm trees greener. 
The golden hour, a twilight glow. The sun gives a little more of itself here. The nights are gentle, humidity like silk at my hairline. I inhale the fresh air, spreading my lungs, spreading my arms, celebrating the city, celebrating living. And uh, the challenge is in the same spirit, uh, in the spirit of this weekend's events. Um, I challenge you to write a poem that celebrates Oldsmar. Can we use some of what you just wrote or? No. <laughs> no. I want it to be good. <laughs> well, thank you. That's all I have today. Oh, um, also for... Uh, this is open to um, all Oldsmar residents. I do host a uh, bi-monthly meeting at the Oldsmar Public Library. It's the first and third Saturdays of each month from 1 to 2 p.m. And usually we just discuss a poet, we write poetry, and we just share um, each other's poems in a really great non-judgmental environment. So I do want to welcome uh, not only city council, but um, just citizens of Oldsmar to attend it's called project poetry so that's all i had today good Thank i you liked your Amanda. poem <laughs> Thank you. give you a round of applause so what what's the date that we have to have this done uh the first meeting the first city council meeting of november so we got four oh, weeks out. and remember you and do it early right. there you go and don't forget to send us an email <laughs> yes yes of course okay. thank you amanda <laughs> thank you amanda thank you amanda so amanda walks in the room and half the council up here is whispering do we have an assignment to <laughs> the power you have it is amazing but anybody else please What's going on? My name is Andre LaCroix. I live at 504 Cypress View Drive here in Oldsmar. I'm a local BMX rider. And first of all, I want to thank you guys for voting yes on, I'm not sure exactly what we voted on, but, <laughs> <laughs> but voted yes on the first thing to keep the track alive. And I know we vote again today on trying to keep it alive again. <laughs> so. Um, I just want to say like thank you for everything you guys do and just giving us the Supercross track in, in general. Like without it, I don't think I could be at the level that I'm at now and I'm racing at the professional level. I just got back from the Pan American Games. So I really thank you guys for all you do and I hope that we can make it happen and get the track back running. I remember when uh, we first had the track shut down for it turning into a Supercross track and it was closed for a pretty long time. And unfortunately we lost a, probably about 75% of our local riders. So I know like for me, like I just wanna see if we can get it back open as soon as possible so we don't lose so many local riders here and have to like start from the ground up again. So I just really hope that we can vote it through and get things rolling again because it sucks having to drive to Sarasota three times <laughs> a week to train. Thank you for coming and speaking about it. I know we're going to talk about it in a little bit. We might even move it up on the agenda just so we can do it and let everybody. But thank you for coming out, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll talk about it more in a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else on this side of the room? Seeing that, I'm going to close the uh, Citizens Open Forum. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of additional new agenda items, new items 8 and 10. The chair will entertain a motion to approve. Mayor, did you want to do the community minute? Excuse me? The community minute. <clears throat> okay. Everybody's she's paying still attention here. tonight. Did you know that she's still here? Yeah, yeah. I can see that's my vice mayor looking out for me. A few more times. Uh, I stand corrected. The next item on the agenda is the community minute, which will be presented by our city clerk Ann Nixon. Oldsmeyer's this weekend, Saturday from twelve thirty to nine. There are four different bands. Ariel's Park. It's a free event and always always a big deal. So definitely go there. Fireworks as well at nine o'clock. Oldsmar Hockey Rink Grand Opening is Saturday, October 12th at 9 o'clock at Oldsmar Sports Complex. Really huge thing. Can't miss it. <laughs> uh, farewell reception for Vice Mayor McGee will be at uh, 6 o'clock, October 15th, before our next council meeting. So definitely come by. We'll have refreshments and cake. Can't say, can't say farewell without cake. <laughs> and then uh, Sunset Sounds is a new free concert series. The first one is October 18th at 6.30, Ariel's Park. It'll feature music by the Trop Rock Junkies. 
It's some kind of music, but I'm sure it's really good. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's free, so bring a blanket, bring your family, and hang out for a bit. That's all I have. Very good. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of additional new agenda items. The only new items we have is item 8, item 10. The chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Do I have a second? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. At this time, the chair will entertain a motion to suspend the rules of the day for the purpose of moving up item number eight. Second. Uh, second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. So at this time, the chair uh, would request uh, a motion to move up item number eight now that the rules are suspended. So moved. Do I have a second? second. Discussion? No. Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Item number eight, I'm going to turn it over to our city manager. Thank you, Mayor. Item number eight, now uh, number one is approved work order number six, 2018-007 RFQ with Ardura Group Incorporated for the BMX track retaining wall design criteria engineering services package. As you mentioned, it was a new agenda item. A little background, in 2015, the city's existing BMX track was reconstructed using a combination of earthen embankments and mechanically stabilized earth retaining walls. As early as September 15, the city noted that the retaining walls were beginning to exhibit distress, which prompted several evaluations by consulting firms and the designer of the wall system over the past several years. At this time, BMX track, as Andre mentioned, has been closed due to life safety concerns. King Engineering Associates at the time, now doing business as Ardura Group, and their team of geotechnical subconsultants provided professional engineering services to evaluate the mechanically stabilized walls at the Hillsborough BMX track. The result of that analysis concluded that the structure required significant remediation or replacement. The recommendation of the consultant was that it was most cost effective to replace the support structure and the elevated portions of the BMX track. In an effort to expedite the reconstruction and restore the use of the BMX track, city staff recommends using a design-build approach to the reconstruction. Under the work order that the Adura Group Incorporated is placed in front of the council for tonight, they will prepare what's known as a design criteria package. The DCP will describe the specific requirements for design, permitting, and construction of the project. This PO contains a not to exceed clause from in a dollar amount of $89,811. Sorry, $89,811. Funding of this project is currently available in the Capital Projects Fund. Recommended motion is to approve the work order number six with our Dura Group for the BMX track retaining wall design criteria, engineering service packages, and staff recommends approval. Thank you. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to so approve. Much. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? I knew there'd be none. <laughs> I, I'm just going to comment on it. First off, thank you for coming out. Uh, I thought there'd have be more riders out here tonight. And I'm also, I, I'm kind of glad there's not. And here's the reason why. Because it says to me that they know how committed this council is to try to get this done. And um, I, I want to commend staff because there was a little press the other day and some of it was, was uh, inaccurate in the fact that the staff has worked very hard to expedite expedite this from the time this all took place. We heard about it on April 11th, literally the same day staff already started working on it. I mean, we, sh we, we had to close the track. It was a danger. We're not compromising on that any way, shape, or form. I don't think anybody up here, no. and all of us support the city's manager's uh, uh, decision on that. And uh, literally 13 days later, we had um, a proposal from the engineering firm. And let, let me back up a little bit so everybody knows this. It's not like you, you can just go out and get anyone, any engineering firm, to do this type of work. They don't exist. They're hard to find. Um, and so we were fortunate that one of our contractors worked with us and helped us uh, find someone that even helped us expedite part of the PO process that we, we are required to go through. And so uh, staff's work on this, I think, has been terrific. Uh, that was April 24th uh, that we've got that proposal in. We were told it'd be four months. 
Staff was on them. We got it back before four months. Because keep in mind, you know, the fact that there are not a lot of these folks out there, all their schedules were full. So now you got to get on their calendar. Now they got to come out. And as much as you might call, I mean, there's one thing that we, uh, we know for certain, that whatever solution there is at the end of the day, it's going to be one that is absolute. Uh, so we don't find ourselves in this position ever again, right? And so I, I take a little exception to, to some of the news report that would suggest that staff isn't doing absolutely everything they can, because I will tell you, they are. All of us ask about it all the time. And, uh, you know, they deserve a lot of kudos for moving things along. And uh, I, I suspect when we vote and approve this, um, you know, they'll continue to expedite it the best that they can uh, under the circumstances. I've got to say this, though, because from all indications from the report that we got from the engineer, this is not going to be an inexpensive fix. I mean, any time uh, the engineer starts, uh, the reports start talking about tearing it down and building up the wall again, that is uh, massive. And um, while the city does well as a city and, and is conservative in the way they manage their money, um, you know, this council and this, this uh, city team uh, is going to have to look real hard at uh, funding such uh, solutions and uh, how that happens. And so I don't, I don't want to give any false information because, frankly, we don't know. We still don't know. We know what's wrong. We don't know what it's going to cost to fix it. And that's kind of the purpose of where we're at right now. So, so you know, once again, I, I thank uh, the staff for all their work on this. And, um, you know, let's... Uh, Let's get this in and get her done. I'm, I'm ready to go back out to the track. You know, four, I was thinking about this today. Four of the council members up here were there uh, at the ribbon cutting and run and ran uh, that first race, if you'll recall. Gabby won. Gabby won. I came in last. <laughs> I wasn't going to throw you under the bus. <laughs> My goal was to not wipe out and not come in last, and I did it. <laughs> and so... You know, there is a personal connection that this council really has with us. This is, you know, yeah. so everybody knows that. I mean, we, we love it. You know, this team's going to be the first team in years that doesn't go out to Gator Nationals this year. You know, that breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. But safety first. Uh, we'll do it the smart way and, uh, and get it done. All right. Uh, sensing there's no other comments and you're ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, awards and recognition. No one's getting recognized tonight? No, no awards? All right. Uh, nothing in the CRA, a community redevelopment. Uh, the next item is the consent docket. We have one item on the consent docket, and that is to approve the minutes of September 11th. I'm just going to roll with it because it's going. Just keep going. Uh, 2019 City Council meeting. Um, the chair will t entertain a motion to approve. Move. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Sensing you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. The next item on the agenda. Am I boring you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm boring myself right now. It's Hopefully okay. she's drawing your picture. I know. I hope she's not sketching me. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is uh, City of Olsmar. First item uh, is presentation of Fire Prevention Week proclamation, which will be presented by City Council Member Norris. Thank you, Mayor, for letting me do this one. You're welcome. <laughs> Office of the Mayor, Oldsmar, Florida, proclamation, 2019 Fire Prevention Week. Whereas the city of Oldsmar is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting Oldsmar, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire, and whereas home fires killed 2,630 people in the United States in 2017, according to the National Fire Protection Association, and fire departments in the United States responded to 357,000 home fires. And whereas when the smoke 
Alarm sounds. Oldsmar residents may have less than two minutes to escape to safety. Residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas Oldsmar residents should make a home escape plan, drawing a map of each level of the home, showing all doors and windows, and practice the plan with everyone in the household, including visitors, at least twice a year, both during the day and at night. And whereas Oldsmar residents should teach children to escape on their own in case adults can't help them and make sure everyone in the home knows how to call 911 from a cell phone or a neighbor's phone. And whereas Oldsmar residents in a real emergency should get low and go under the smoke to get out quickly. Residents should get out and stay out, never going back inside the home for people, pets, or things. And whereas the 2019 Fire Prevention Week theme, not every hero wears a cape, plan and practice your escape, effectively serves to remind us that we need to take personal steps to increase our safety from fire. Now, therefore, I, Council Member Linda Norris, on behalf of the Mayor of Oldsmar, Eric Seidel <laughs> of Oldsmar, Florida, do hereby proclaim October 6th to 12th, 2019 as Fire Prevention Week throughout the city, and I urge all of the people of Oldsmar to be aware of their surroundings, look for available ways out in the event of a fire or other emergency, respond when the smoke alarm sounds by exiting the building immediately, and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of Oldsmar's Fire and Emergency Services during Fire Prevention Week 2019, dated this first day of October 2019. Very good. <laughs> And now I'd like to, Jason is our chief, um, and Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this is the guy with the longer hair. Yeah. <laughs> 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 nice. Uh, that was funny. <laughs> It'll look good no matter what standing next to them. <laughs> All bookends. <laughs> yeah. It's from working all those fires, see? <laughs> Well, now the meeting's going to get even more interesting. We have a presentation on transportation initiatives from our county administrator, Mr. Barry Burton. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, thank you for having me to the mayor, to council members, to my colleague. Um, you know, uh, one, it's just it's nice to come out and just talk with you. I didn't think less than a year in I'd be out on this topic and in this manner, but let me kind of go through this. and. Um, so we've been kind of having a community conversation around transportation, and Barbara's going to tell me how to turn this thing on. There you go. There it goes. Automatic will happen. Well, and my, well, Barbara's taking pictures of, uh, Barbara's our uh, director of communications. She's loving your technology, and she's taking pictures. She went back there and looked. <laughs> so, so it's been a good trip just in, in, well, in good. looking at your council chamber. It's set up very nice. Um, but it's for effective presentations, which is, you know, what it's about. Um, you know, one of the things that we, um, over this past year, having a fresh set of eyes, I kind of saw um, a lot of things operating in silos. And you see it, we see it. And, and so I'm really bringing together a talk about transportation of how to do something a little bit different. Some of these plans you've seen before, if you've been part of Ford Pinellas, um, you've seen our long range plans and you've seen some of these things develop. But I'm tying it in with some other areas that we're really focused around, which is employment, workforce, and other things. So I'll give you a kind of a breakdown of how this started. You know, back um, earlier this year, Ford Pinellas, we had a, a presentation on transportation. One of the things that they pointed out was that our transportation trust fund, that's the county's trust fund, it's the same with you in terms of your roads, um, that we're, we're spending down our reserve. So currently, it's projected that we either reduce the level of service or increase revenue in that trust fund by about 2022. 
Um, currently, we get 60% of the of the gas tax. You get 40% on the cities, and you know that's how that's kind of divvied up. And I'm so I'm assuming you're in the same boat as we are. You're looking and trying to stretch and make do with what you have, which is you know what we all do with our budgets. Um, but we also saw, and and that was kind of the new piece that kind of expedited this this, this community discussion was, PSTA start looking and saying, hey, we you know Houston, we've got a problem here, and by 2022. Um, we we will have we'd be out of our reserves, and so they started looking at service cuts. And as you know, um, especially being out here, yeah, I live just a few miles away from here. Uh, service is limited anyway, you know. And so the, the limited service that we have um, was a threat because the ridership's not real high. And we'll get we'll kind of talk about that in a minute. So they're looking, and I look, at, and we look at that chart, and we say, wait a minute. <laughs> It's about 2022 also. And so it really kind of sparked community conversation about what can we do um, about this? How can we plan for that to where we have time to react? We have time to look at options um, and get input and then make a decision about the direction this county wants to go. But simultaneously with that, we did, a, we did our own um, citizen survey. And Barbara likes to use these word um, diagrams. And, and so every time a resident says it, well, then the word gets bigger. And you can see the number one issue that came out of our residents' mind, right. you know, traffic, you know, and and, uh, and we know it's a it's a problem. The question is, what what can we do about it? Well, we, at the same time, I'm talking about traffic. I'm going and you know, being new, I, I go out and I, I talk to a lot of our employers. I talk to employers right here in Oldsmar. I talk to employers down around the Gateway area and stuff. The one thing everybody said is workforce is absolutely key. What they also told me is I've got jobs that are vacant that I can't get qualified people to fill. I, okay, I hear that. I go over to um, um, St. Petersburg College and she says, guess what? <laughs> I've got training classes that I can't fill. Everybody I could get in this training class, I could get a job. And so transportation became, you know, that word that, word that we saw in that diagram kind of started popping up in my own mind. That transportation, the link and, and linking people to jobs, to services, is an economic issue. It's also an issue of being able to give people opportunity uh, to go to that job training, to upgrade their skills. And, and, and so it became such an important issue. We kind of put this on steroids and said, let's really look at this. And that's how we kind of got to this you know, conversation today. We know we have too much traffic. Um, we need to reduce congestion. But we also need to make our roads safer. And we, we see that, and, I, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then we also know that our, our transit service is just insufficient. So we really kind of pulled those issues together and said, can we do this in kind of a balanced approach? So from a road congestion standpoint, in Pinellas County, we're very fortunate to have an ATMS system, advanced traffic management system. And that's where, you know, it's supposed to tie in your, your lights and to where when you hit a green, you get greens. Well, I haven't seen that yet, but I know it's supposed to work. Okay. Theoretically. You know? <laughs> um, and and that's, that assumes that everybody's going at the same speed and you don't have an accident or do, you know, traffic doesn't slow down. Well, we also know that we haven't built out about 60 miles of that system. We've been putting money into it. We had about $4 million a year. The county manages it. But, you know, really, we're, we're pretty fortunate because um, a lot of that was federal money back when you had earmarks and things like that. Um, those systems don't exist in count, at county levels very many places. I had one where I was at before. We're very fortunate to have it. But we also know that, you know, we, we need to build it out, but we also need to incorporate newer technology because, you know, the timing of those lights, well, it should, with newer technology, you can time it to where those lights adjust based upon the traffic volume. It pings phones. It does all kinds of new things to make that adjustment occur with the flow of traffic to where it's not based upon everybody going 30 miles an hour or something like that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more we can do to get more throughput out of our existing roads. And that's the key thing. How can we maximize getting the most amount of cars through our existing roads? Another area that we know is intersections. You come up to a big intersection, dull turns, all these different things. And it, and it moves, you know, it clears out and, and you go to a different intersection and it doesn't. So we know that we've got a lot of intersections. We've, we've identified uh, things in the penny. We've made sure everything that we've talked about is in addition to what was promised as part of penny. And, and intersections is a key area. We were doing lane improvements and stuff like that. We're also, we understand that we've got data on certain uh, intersections, but municipalities have data on that. We were just out with, with your staff meeting with other cities. And so we're gonna populate this and talk about what are those key 
bottlenecks that we have within our transportation system, I don't care where it's at, that it moves people from point A to point B. And so looking really at our intersections and improving that will both improve, reduce congestion, but also um, improve uh, safety at these intersections. And that leads us to our next point, which is making our transportation, our transportation system safer. I've seen more accidents here than you know, I'm, that I'm used to, and, and, and that's a shame. And, and part of that is because we have, uh, we're a very dense county, and where do we have most of them? We have them in turning movements. You know, you turn right and you got a pedestrian in the crosswalk or a bicycle or other things. There's a lot more that we can do to make our transportation system safer. One is to deconflict, you know, our cars with our bikes on the Pinellas Trail and elevate those crossings uh, to where they're not trying to cross at grade. But there's a lot more we can do with our uh, traffic, um, with um, the um, uh, pedestrian type of, of uh, I'm sorry, let me go back, uh, the enhanced traffic control measures. So right now, you know, you hit the beacon and it turns lights, et cetera, and stuff, and those are safe. But what I also can do is where you have intersections and we have a couple out where you get a no right turn when when it's uh, motion activated when somebody's in the crossing. Mm -hmm. That would significantly reduce um, the number of accidents we have. And, and if you look, it, 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 they are all over the county, yeah, they're really all over the county. Another area we look at is in street lights. We've got over 100 miles. This is county controlled intersections. Wait till we add in the cities. 100 miles of primary and feeder corridors where we don't have street lights. We took, a, we took a, an area down around Lowman and we, we just simply did a heat map of where our accidents are. And you can, you can see the pictures worth a thousand words. Our accidents are where we don't have street lights <laughs> and significantly more. So we can reduce the, the safety for our residents of approximately 30% on average uh, when, we, when we have um, street lights built out on along these major corridors. We think, you know, having our roads safe is just a key component of having a, tra a safe transportation system. And then finally, um, we have over 120 miles of sidewalk gaps. I'm sure if I asked Al, he would give me a list of where he'd like to fill in sidewalk gaps. The <laughs> county has that same list, and we've been working on them, and we've been behind, and we're, we, you know, we're taking a little bit at a time. Um, but it, we're, we're just not getting there, you know? And, and we, we have a lot of areas. And I ran into an area where, um, or a, a school where they have a cross country team, and they run down a county street. Um, there's no sidewalks, and that's just what they've always done, right? Well, that's all well and good until we had our recent flooding and stuff, and it was wet. So then now the water's halfway out in the street, and guess what? The team's still running down that street and around cars and everything else. Oh. We can do better than that, you know? And we really need to, we need to clean that up as part of this program. Um, so we, we, we talk about two things, moving, reducing congestion. We talk about improving the safety on our roads. But another key component is having a, a transit system that can move people and make some of these connections. Um, so as we looked at that, as I said, we, we really wanted to look at it from kind of a data-driven standpoint. What are we trying to connect? We're trying to connect jobs, job training, and that housing that's affordable. And so we tar started kind of breaking those down. And we put the indicators down and then tried to make corridors that connect them. That really looked at identifying where are our employment densities, where are opportunity zones? You know, where are the workforce development and training areas? We looked at population densities. We looked at minority and low-income areas. Um, Zero-car households. You know, a lot of people that just simply don't have a car. Um, and then we also looked at where has where's the investment been made? What what areas have we put and flipped from a commercial area to a higher density? Um, uh, area for a housing that's affordable. And that's largely underutilized commercial areas. Um, a, a lot of them are. Uh, it's not absolute, but certainly uh, older commercial areas where the value of the land is greater than the value of the building. Um, so that's kind of where we've seen that private sector investment and in, in kind of that change in use. So if I put that up on a, on a map, you know, you can begin to see um, things come kind of nice and, nice and clear. Um, and it, so we, we said that that's the areas that we want to connect. That's the areas we want to work on. Uh, it's data driven. It really looks at how we can maximize using public dollars to spur private investment along those corridors. Um, and, and it really come up with three priority corridors, but that's not all. You know, it's three primary corridors really link that network of US 19 South, um, East Bay Drive, Roosevelt, and Alt 19 South. That connects up a lot of these job training areas. 
but if I if I keep going and I and I break those down, you can see like 19 South has high population densities, low income areas, zero card households. It links several CRAs, and so it's a key a key development area of making and creating some of these opportunities. Over in the Roosevelt East Bay Drive, we have you know that's a lot of our medical office manufacturing jobs. Same way as out here, 15% of that the people along that corridor are, have incomes below poverty level. But it also supports our gateway master plan, which in turn would offer opportunities if there's regional connections in the future. And so it's done with a plan in mind for today, but actually looking you know, towards the future, and that's out of the Ford Pinellas plan. Um, and then finally, um, a, a an Alt-19 South. 5,500 cars in this corridor, I mean households in this corridor don't have a car. Um, that's a lot. You know, and so we, we really look at focusing on them. But what we're really talking about is a different type of PSTA service. We're talking about enhanced levels of service and, and really making it to where people can depend on it. Right now, they kind of do mass coverage. They're trying to make a, a limited, a finite pot of money spread as many places they, they can. Well, what as a result of that, you get on and you have 19 stops later and, and you get off, but it's an hour and a half later. Um, and it makes it in, not feasible for people to engage in employment opportunities or training opportunities and things like that. And so um, this is about changing that, going to more express service, being able to take and look at 580. And 580, you've got tremendous opportunity there. Um, you don't have the same draw in numbers that, of use, but you can speed up, have more express routes. You can have more things that focus around our seniors and our veterans and our disabled populations. You know, they're really working hard on looking at first mile, last mile issues, which is the key to a transit system like that. And so there's a lot more that we can do with that. And then we obviously, now as, as we said before, we're, they're gonna go out, out of money, so we build in a factor for inflation uh, with managing their existing routes, but also the other connecting routes that feed into those, those corridors. Um, when I put it all together, you know, there's always a punchline, and, and, and that comes down to dollars. Um, you know, and it's and it's a lot of money, um, but but look at what we're getting. You know what what the what the impact can be. You know, just calculating the things that we have, we're adding in the the city cost right now. That's about four hundred million, but about you know thirty one and a half million dollars of operating cost. <clears throat> so you, you play that out. It's a big number, but it it really puts on the table where what the kind of basic need is. Um, this is not. There's actually nine primary quarters under the Pinellas. Uh, the Ford Pinellas plan. So we could make this a lot more of, of an enhanced service. But th the idea is let's prioritize. Let's start slow, let's build it, and, and drive that usage. And because I think that'll take time too. People are used to something, it'll take time to shift those patterns. And so we've tried to be frugal in our approach and, and also, but do those things that really have an impact on our overall transportation system. Um, when, we, when we put that all together, we say, all right, now how are we gonna pay for that? Obviously, there, we could put, we could, uh, the county commission could increase the gas tax tomorrow, okay? It's, it's five cents they can go up to. That generates about $18 million a year, okay? What, what can we do with that? Well, it doesn't address the enhanced levels of service, but what we could do is we, we and, the, and with the cities and the county could come together and say, well, let's divide that up a third, a third, and a third between us, PSTA, and that. And what that does is it pushes that 20, 2022 number out to about 2025. So it gives us a little more time, all right? And so that's what it does. It kind of kicks the can down the road. It doesn't, it doesn't enhance the level of service, but it allows us to continue to operate. We can look at uh, sales tax. That obviously would be referendum based, and we'd have to have to ask the voters uh, to, to be able to do something like that. You can see the dollars that that generates over a 10 year period. Um, <laughs> or we could go to an ad valorem, a property tax. Obviously, sales tax is, you know, you, you get the visitors helping to contribute to the traffic, you know, and, and uh, so that, that becomes a, a little bit more palatable than a, an ad valorem tax, but that certainly is something the commission could consider. Um, PSDA, however, can't. Um, they're, they're capped, and without an act of the state legislature, they can't increase their property tax. And so that begins to limit the options, which is the reason that, you know, they started looking at those service cuts to begin with. So we've kind of put these together um, because we said, Transportation is the key to pulling a lot of these, these issues together. Under the penny four, the county commission committed 4.15% to housing that's affordable. And we're out looking at that. We're talking, 
with, with different folks. We're talking with cities, we're talking and looking at where can we make sure that investment um, is good, solid investment. Uh, how can we get private sector investment into that? We know there's only so many state funds, um, but I also know the delta between what the demand is and, and what's actually being produced, you know, and the gap's huge. So how can we how can we do more with that? I think really looking at making good, solid investments creates some of that opportunity. If we're going to put uh, and we're going to uh, drive uh, housing that's affordable, and I and I say it that way purposely because it's different levels of housing. You know, people have a bad connotation with that when you know I guess my kid, you know, what he lives in would be considered affordable housing, and it's housing that's affordable. Well, you know, you can having those have those connections though between services, between jobs, between job training and getting back home, I think are key. And so we, we want to do that in a connected manner. And so wherever we make that investment, that it's a smart investment. Um, and that's one of the things the County Commission committed to as part of Penny 4. So we're out having this, we're, we're giving this presentation, we're getting feedback on it. Uh, I've given this to everybody from to St. Petersburg College, I said, Let, tell me that this helps the kids. Look at where they come from, look at where they're going. You know, help us with making sure this makes sense, that if we actually implement and we do something, that it, it moves the needle and we accomplish something. And so that's, uh, that's what we're out having uh, these types of conversations for. We welcome your input, we welcome anybody's input. I gave this initial presentation to the commission uh, a couple months ago. We've been doing this around the county. I'm going to bring this back to them probably early next month um, and, and continue to see you know, where, where they want to go. Um, we've put it on the table and we said, here are the issues. Now that always the question is, you know, what do, what do we want to do about it? So thank you for your time. Uh, I, you know, obviously separate from the presentation, if you have any other questions about things that you know, we're doing at the county or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer them or address any concerns. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you much. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Mayor Fimo. Um, I just had a quick question. Outside of like bus service, because I feel like someday in the not too distant future, that's going to be very legacy sort of transportation service. Have you guys considered partnering with companies like Uber or Uber Pool, where if somebody were to put in a certain destination like SPC or PTAC, they get discounted rides? Because personally, I could see more people getting on board with that because it's flexible. You don't mm -hmm. have to sit through 12 stops. Mm -hmm. And there's a carpool element from an Uber pool standpoint. And you're I, also creating more jobs with companies like Uber. So And, and I know PSTA, um, obviously I don't sit on the PSTA board, but they, they're doing more with that. Um, I'm very familiar with using that. Again, first mile, last mile are key issues. Um, you know, there's not too many buses that go and navigate business parks and, you know, drop people off at door service, right? So those first mile, last mile are key. I think we have to partner more with our businesses too. <laughs> You know, um, I think, uh, you know, just uh, uh, just because I do a lot with economic development and have for the last uh, many years, um, I think we got we got used to having all the workers, you know, come to our door and we didn't have to mm -hmm. spend money on training them and things like that. And now we're back at three percent unemployment. We need to make some of that investment. Um, so there's there's things that we can do as government. There's things that we can do as private sector and spur that and partner with them to make some of those things. Okay. Yes, we're looking at those technologies that would be incorporated into kind of the new and improved way in which we do transit. Okay, great. Mayor, I can um, please I'd like to say something. Gabby, sure. I would like to answer your question. I'm on the PSTA board, and Barry, if you don't mind, I'd like to help with that great. answer. They already have a, a relationship with Uber and Lyft. The person needs that last mile. It's a five, it's a five dollar discount on their Uber. So there is a code that they put in their phone that gives them that five dollar discount to get them to that last mile. So Uber can pick them up. And it's it's really good for military or disabled people or someone that is um, mm -hmm. needs a can't really get around good. It works great and it's already in place for PSTA for the bus service. I would just say I would look at. If it were me, I would look at expanding that to students, particular locations, schools, et cetera, because, you know, the more people sort of Uber pool or carpool, um, you have less traffic, less congestion. And I'm thinking like full subsidized rates, you know, not even just $5 off. Mm -hmm. It's like, why not ask the schools to invest money in those kinds of discounts, things of that nature? So just something like mm -hmm. food for thought. Future. Yeah, I think there might be some, anyone else? There might be some other, other thoughts. Did you have some? I just had one um, question. So the three funding sources that you outlined, are you thinking of like doing combinations? I, I'm just thinking that those of us that drive electric cars, 
we don't ever pay a fuel tax <laughs> and that's not fair. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, that's not fair. So is it, would it be a combination so that? I think the, the issue about uh, a gas, um, have, ha, a gas tax being an effective way to fund transportation is a much bigger conversation, you know, as, as uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because uh, it is because, you know, we, we, we did that when, you know, it was, you get 15 miles to the gallon and now you get 50. And, and, and so, you know, there's a lot of issues that go into the way we fund that. It could be any combination. combination. I think I think we've put that out there as a, a, a that because these are options that we have at our at our, at our table, um, but obviously there's drawbacks to each. If you go more on the property tax; it burns our homeowners. You go to a sales tax; obviously, then everybody's contributing. Um, the gas tax, you know, is one that's kind of a regressive and right. and um, and self defeating in the long run. But <laughs> I, I think that's part of the conversation. I didn't necessarily say we should do this or this or this. Right. I really want to have that conversation oh, with the commission and we want to get feedback like that, um, you know, as we kind of come to make a recommendation. The community might not like that I just said that, but it's the truth. <laughs> what you say? Yeah. That Don't. it's not fair. Oh, well, yeah. She's not because I'm not paying it. Well, let, let me ask you, Barry, have you gotten any sense, feedback? I know you've been out on the road and, mm -hmm. and talking to folks. I mean, especially from the uh, some of the local uh, municipalities. I, th I think north, south, east, and west, everybody said, we need to do something, right? <laughs> you know? No, no, I don't think people like the last slide where we talk about paying for it, right? But, but I mean, the need's there, and, and nobody's really argued that. And I think everybody, I, I think everybody really likes that it's a, a measured approach. Um, we're not trying to go after and solve everything. And we'll, and we'll, we'll have some proof of concepts. Capital is easy. You know, some of the other issues I think are more societal issues, but we know we're investing, you know, $80 million um, over the next 10 year period. And I want to make sure that we do it in the right manner. And so yeah. making these corridors and connecting mm -hmm. these corridors, um, all the experts I talk to say this is this is right on and, and this will move the needle It'll give people opportunity and it'll help our businesses. And that's what I hear from businesses. I mean, almost sure. universally. We hear it when we go out and do We Mean Business, which is a local program that we do. We go and visit our manufacturers mm -hmm. and different companies. And we hear it all the time in terms of, I could hire more if I could find them. You know, we have a, mm -hmm. a, a reasonable size manufacturing yes, base here in Oldsmar. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll tell you, one of, the, one of the potential approaches that we've been exploring a little bit, and... Uh, <clears throat> And that is working with St. Pete College on bringing specific manufacturing type training programs, right. mm -hmm. bringing them here right. where we are trying, you know, once we've kind of identified, I, I'm not sure where the status is with, with them right now, but um, potentially bringing manufacturers together which it, some of this work's been done before, right? Yeah. And then looking, are there some kind of commonalities that exist that can be taught skill-wise? Mm -hmm. And our approach would be to kind of tie it together for our city is to really promote that to our citizens. Okay. Hey, did you know, right here in Oldsmar, instead of traveling to wherever, uh, there are jobs and there are programs that you can learn and get into those jobs. I mean, I don't know if that... I don't know if there's opportunity uh, in other parts of the county to maybe it's not always about moving them from point A to B. Maybe it's a matter of saying, here's something close. Here's a way to get a job by taking this program. Mm -hmm. You know, so anyhow. I think I think it's all the above. And I think that you're exactly right. The more you can do to put emphasis on that, um, one, it helps your employers, you know, and, and they're trying to run a business and, and they need employees to be able to do that. Um, but I think it's going to be a combination. I think you also really promote some of the on the job training programs that we have through through um, C-SPIN, mm -hmm. you know, and and looking at our workforce development. And these are federal dollars where we can help our businesses in upgrading skills and things like that. So I think it's going to be all that and, and trying to keep a competitive environment for us, and all, but also give um, give our young people, not always young people, but give them opportunities to upgrade their skills. Um, it just makes for a better economy. I'd rather have them gainfully employed, making good dollars and paying our taxes. You know? I like that part. <laughs> Anything else? Nope. We have well, a copy of the presentation. Can we get a copy? Be, be happy to. Thank Excellent. you. Let me email it out. All right.
Well, thank you, sir. Good. Thank you. Thank you for making it over to Oldsmar. <laughs> We're not, you know, I say this all the time. It gets me in trouble, but I'm already elected. And so, <laughs> you know, we come right up against Tampa. And we go, we're not the end of the world, but we can see it from here. So. <laughs> well, a little humor for well, our friends Well, my wife and I love your movie theater. We're about 2.4 miles away. So There you uh, go. You know, so we're over here all the time. But thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Nice thank job. You, sir. All right, the next item on the agenda is the city manager. Excuse me, the city attorney. I have nothing today. Thank you. Excellent. The next item, city manager, item number four. Thank you, Mayor. Item number four is request council approval to waive bid requirements and purchase polyphosphite from SPER Chemical Corporation under the same terms and conditions as the City of Sebring contract number RFP dash, sorry, number 16-004 on piggyback form 16-022. Oldsmar Reverse Osmosis Water Treatment Plant has used SPER Chemical Corporation's Sequest All Weather Treated Polyphosphate to stabilize the treated water prior to distribution for the past several years. So this is actually technically a renewal and an extension of that contract. City of Sebring contract number RFP-16-004 was bid and initially awarded for three years on April 5th, 2016. On February 20th, 2019, SPE, our chemical corporation, agreed to extend the contract for an additional three years, the same pricing of $665 per 300 pound drum plus shipping. The budgetary impact is the funds for this purchase of this item are budgeted in the RO treatment plant chemical line item in fund 401 and staff recommends approval. Chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Do I have a second? second. Any discussion? I have a few comments. <laughs> there you go, slow the train. <laughs> I have a few comments and it's gonna bring me back to my um, chemical engineering college days. Um, this, this item kind of is like one that we, it's a piggyback, it's usually a general thing that we always, you know, but I wanted to know what polyphosphate was and I wanted to know that whoever, you know, what it was, what it did and who do we get it from and, you know, we know who we get it from and is it safe? right, with all of the different things. So I did some research, and not only is our reverse osmosis water treatment plant taking a permeable membrane and taking out impurities, but that's what polyphosphate does as well. It, it attaches to heavy metals, and it, it, it makes our water even better. And so I went on to the company website because my thought was Chinese drywall, Flint, Michigan, you know, we're drinking this water, we're taking showers with this water. And in the very first two paragraphs on their website, it says, available from U.S. manufacturers, we specifically use U.S. suppliers to assure the quality and safety, especially after the potential threats of 9-11 and difficulties of Chinese drywall. So I was like so wow. happy. Yeah. That's it was cool. Like, that was the question that I had, and it was right there. And, you know, I, I, I am a chemical nerd a little bit, you know, so I'm looking at all of what it does, how it binds and everything else, but we won't go down that rabbit hole because I went down that rabbit hole for a couple hours, and I won't <laughs> make y'all do that. But I just wanted to assure the citizens of Oldsmore that you don't have to buy bottled water. You, this is the best water in the Tampa Bay area, and I'm one of the test houses. So, And I've been one of the test houses ever since the RO treatment plant has been um, built. And I get the report. So I see how minuscule different, you know, things are. And this is the list of everything that it filters out. And I'm not going to bore you with that either. But it's like, you know, it's got everything on it that you don't want in your water and the percentages of what it takes out. So anyway, I just had to say that because I was so excited there you go. about it. That's cool. That's good to know. Yeah. So right. you didn't have to, man. I did my research. That's it. There you go. Have you researched all the other chemicals? I'm just curious. The other chemical. The other chemical. I did. I'm just preparing myself. I did. A couple coming up. There's only one other one, and I did. But. Okay. There's a, a, any other discussion? <laughs> None. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Next aye. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mayor. Item five is request council approval to waive bid requirements and purchase sodium hypochlorite <laughs> from Odyssey Manufacturing Company under the same terms and conditions as the Tampa Bay Water Contract, number 2019-005 on piggyback form 19-007. Sodium hypochlorite is an essential chemical used for water disinfection in the respective treatment processes at both the reverse osmosis water treatment plant and the water reclamation facility. Hoping I don't take Councilmember Norris's thunder. <laughs> 
the uh, Odyssey Manufacturing Company has supplied the city of Ellesmar with sodium hypochlorite for several years, and the public works staff has found the product delivery and customer service to fully meet the city's needs. Again, this is technically an extension or renewal. Tampa Bay Water Contract Number 2019-005 with Odyssey was approved by the Tampa Bay Water Board at the December 3rd, 2018 meeting. The initial contract was January 1, 2019 through 9.30 of 2019 and included the availability of three one-year additional renewals. The first renewal through September 30th of 2020 and Odyssey's agreement to offer the same price terms and conditions to the city of Oldsmar are attached and that's what we're recommending. The contract unit price be $0.462 per gallon as outlined in the attached letter, funds for the purchase are budgeted in both the RO and water reclamation facility budgets. And recommending motion is that they approve the purchase of sodium hypochlorite from Odyssey Manufacturing under the same terms and conditions as the Tampa Bay Water Contract Number 2019-005 and staff recommends approval. Chair will entertain a motion to approve. Do I have a second? second? Discussion? This one's not as sexy. <laughs> well, isn't it 5% sodium hypochlorite's bleach, right? Yes, pretty much. It's pretty much a disinfectant, but, but it is a Tampa company, so it's another local company. So. Very good. Any more discussion? And that was that was sexy. I'm just saying. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Said you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mayor. Item six is we have bid requirements and award Appalachian Material Services. Inc., or as we know them, AMS, the sludge hauling and disposal services contract for the city's water reclamation facility, WRF, under the same terms and conditions as the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, bid number 150042-B-RS on piggyback form 16-019. AMS is also most current WRF biosolids hauling and disposal provider and has performed all contractual services satisfactorily. AMS has agreed to extend to the city of Oldsmar a piggyback agreement of their current agreement agreement with the City of Tarpon Springs from October 1, 2019 through the end of the contract period. The Tarpon Springs contract term is for the period February 13th, 2015 through February 12th, 2020. The budgetary impact is that the City's Water Reclamation Facility projected annual sludge hauling is budgeted not to exceed $150,000 in fiscal year 2020. The funding for this contract is in the Water Reclamation Facility annual operating budget in the 401 fund, and the recommended motion is to waive bid requirements and award applets and material services, the sludge hauling and disposal services contract for the City's WRF facility under the same terms and conditions as the City of Tarpet Springs, Florida bid number 150042-B-RS, and staff recommends approval. Chair, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Sludge? It's not sexy. Not sexy. No. no. <laughs> Set you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mayor. Item 7 is authorized the city manager to advertise 2020-001-RFP, a professional services for a climate resilience study. The city adopted resolution 2018-15 on September 4th, year 2018, supporting the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council Memorandum of Understanding, which created the Tampa Bay Regional Resiliency Coalition to address sea level rise and climate resiliency. Through this plan, the city will seek professional services to provide a greater understanding of local and regional climate risks, identify opportunities to prepare for those changes, educate our residents and businesses about risks and adaptation options, and build the capacity of the city to include climate, climate data in decision making. The resiliency study is funded in the general ledger account and 401 fund, not to exceed $125,000. Staff recommends approval. And if you remember, we had a discussion about this at the budget workshop just to refresh the council's memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I remember. <laughs> <coughs> is there a motion uh, to so approve? Moved. Second. Any discussion? This is awesome. I said my piece at the planning side. I said my piece there, other than to say that I have confidence in it. Yeah, good. Because I have a complete vote of confidence in our public works director <laughs> who assured me that there would be actionable items that would come out of this and that it was worth the investment. So on her word, I'm going to support that, along with the city manager. I would like to make a comment about that sure. and you. That's an effective leader move right there, is that even if you're, you know, like with art, you always let me, you know, talk about the arts. And what you let people that know more than you about something make important decisions, and that is a commendable. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It's easy to have this one um, motto I have, and that is the smartest person in the room 
Because the one who knows, they are not the smartest person in the room. <laughs> That's true. Mm. And it's actually a lot of truth that they think about that. Session, you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion passes. That does it for you, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Next on the agenda is the city clerk. Nine. Adopt resolution 2019-17, establishing the qualifying period of October 15, 2019 to November 15, 2019 for the March 17, 2020 special election. Vice Mayor McGee firmly tendered her resignation from Council C3 to be effective October 21, 2019. The state charter stipulates holding a special election between 120 and 180 days after the seat is officially vacated. In order to secure assistance from the Pinellas County Supervisor of Elections, the special election will need to be held March 17, 2020, concurrent with the presidential preference primary election. The March 17, 2020 election meets the criteria outlined in the city charter as it is 148 days after the official vacation of Council C3. In order to meet the qualifying periods, period requirements outlined in the city charter, the qualified period for the special election needs to begin October 15, 2019 and end November 15, 2019. I'll read resolution 2019-17 by title only. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Baltimore establishing the candidate qualifying period for the March 17, 2020 special election and providing for an effective date hereof. And of course, we recommend adoption. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Regrettably. Here we go again. Here we go again. No, I'm saving all this right now. Uh, any discussion? No. Seeing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Anything else? That's all I have. That's all you got. All right. Next item on the agenda is the City Council. Uh, item number 10, approval of cancellation of December 17, 2019 City Council meeting. <clears throat> Uh, do I have a motion to approve? So, so move. Second. Right, second. second. Gabby says, ah, yeah, go ahead, cancel. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. With your bad self, go right ahead. All right. Oh. Any discussion? I'm camping. You're camping. All right. <laughs> Sensing you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Item number 11, uh, tentative agenda. Is there anyone who wishes to pull anything from the tentative agenda? Is there anyone who wishes to add anything to the tentative agenda? The chair will entertain a motion to approve the tentative agenda as presented. So moved. Do I have a second? Yep. Uh, any discussion? Since then you're ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Council comments. I'm going to start with council member, vice mayor, <laughs> Gabby McGee. <laughs> I have nothing this evening, mayor. Wow. <laughs> you know, I called on you last week. Didn't you know? I knew yeah. you. I figured you sure. would. I told sure. Al that nothing. you would. She had nothing. You had nothing last week either. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, Council Member Gannon. I just wanted to uh, give a real quick shout out to Jason um, over at the uh, Express Oil site plan. Um, you might recall at the corner of Commerce and Tampa Road where the learning experience is located, they're building Express Oil, which is sort of an upscale um, auto repair lube kind of place. Um, they have allowed literally hundreds of curious children watch the giant heavy equipment <laughs> move around the construction site from a distance, of course, a safe distance. Um, and they're actually organizing a sort of special miniature field trip for all the kids. And my kids happened to go oh, to wow. the learning experience. And, you know, I just thought that that was really special that they uh, have made an effort to assure a lot of nervous parents, one of which was myself, when a prior council approved the site plan and there was concern, you know, is this construction, there's more, you know, cars coming in and out of there because of this coming new business. But these folks have really been there from day one, not not a sub, 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 sub contractor. Right. It's, you know, Jason from Express Oil, his, you know, at email address. And I just thought that that was really special, the partnership and constant communication that they've had with the learning experience and, and trying to make sure that it can actually even be fun. You know, so I am um, also... I thought that there might be some folks here tonight uh, after a little bit of a dust up on Facebook, um, but unfortunately, uh, I don't see any of them in the crowd, but that's how Facebook kind of is sometimes. I, um, I felt compelled to 
defend the city and uh, the city's <coughs> recent actions in uh, this council's approvals of various site plans for property that isn't ours, really. <laughs> um, and there was a, a sort of discussion that was on a, a public page, a public forum, um, not a private group on Facebook or anything like that, discussing how the city seems to be saturating uh, uh, further um, the auto-related industries. And uh, I didn't feel that that was very fair because in most cases, if not all, I can't think of one where there was an auto related entity that came in to work uh, work up the development of a city related property but you know it is it's a fair point you know auto styles express oil and then tidal wave okay they're all auto related and that's just maybe the market driver for our city and that's okay but when we don't own the land you know we can't start a trend of failing to approve site plans that comply with the code that are very qualified and talented and educated city staff have recommended we approve. And just in case, because I'm a researcher like that, I actually brought a copy of the writ, which is a fancy word for a specific type of lawsuit, recently brought against the city of Safety Harbor for failing to approve a site plan that was submitted and was in accordance with the code, it was recommended by Safety Harbor City staff to approve. Seven nothing, the zoning board recommended approval. So now they're faced with an October 7th meeting um, with an agenda item for the applicant's request for a rehearing. And only those three who voted to deny the site plan can actually make a motion. Consider, right. Yeah, to, to grant a rehearing. And if not, it goes to the circuit court. And I pointed out to some of those folks on Facebook that if we did something similar to that, then it's your tax dollars potentially paying for the costs of litigating the issue and any damages that result from it. So, you know, and there are other things we can do. You know, a lot of people say, okay, well then we need to change the code if it complies with the code. Well, then you, you know, you can go down that path and, and we can talk about those different consequences. But I did make a point of saying, everybody up here would be glad to talk to you. Everybody up here would be happy to answer your email, your phone call, and you're always welcome to come to a meeting to learn more about the process. So I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. You're welcome. I saw it as well, and I, I chose not to engage on it, but <laughs> which is unusual. Just me, but, couldn't help myself this time. You but you know, normally I'm like, it's not city land, okay? You know, those are all my neighbors. I know they are. All of them. It's you know. Listen, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> One of them. Point. <laughs> here, here, here's the thing. There were other things that could have gone there that would have, you know, we had people who were interested in putting a gas station and convenience store there. We had some things that may not be right. viewed as, uh, you know, as friendly to the area. And so, you know, our staff does the best they can. They work within the rules and try to, you know, encourage or whatever you want to call it, uh, stay still within the rules. But I, I'm always reminded of this on that subject, and that is part of our oath is, you know, we protect property right owners. I mean, they own that property. You can't just arbitrarily start changing the rules on them when they bought it in good faith with the city. Right. And, you know, that's a legitimate, you know, um, um, uh, importance of our, of our job. But and anyhow, well, point well made. All right. Councilmember Siraki. Thank you, Mayor. Was that, was that you on there? No, never mind. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> I was nice. <laughs> I have a couple things. First of all, I attended the Pinellas County Sheriff's Volunteer Awards breakfast with Cindy, mm -hmm. and I want to congratulate Mark Howe and Jerry Peruzzi from the Chamber of Commerce for winning the Volunteer Award for their service to our community, and I thought that was really special that Paul and I got to attend that, and they won those two awards. It was really actually an honor to be there. I just wanted to bring that out. And then I got a short story. When I got into politics back in 2009, I became the president of my HOA, which I'm still the president. Well, as I, I told Eric just now, all those people on Facebook or whatever, they're, they're my neighbors. Well, my neighbor across the street called me, and he complained that the creek, Moccasin Creek, was overgrown for 20 years. The city, well, long story short, 
I went to Al for help. Al took over and got our city staff involved because it ended up being the city of Oldsmar's responsibility to take care of Moccasin Creek, which goes by Oak Leaf Boulevard, right behind East Lake Oaks into this, these ponds that are behind East Lake Oaks. The city staff has been there for the last seven days. They have done an amazing, incredible job. The property was completely overgrown. The grass was, I don't even know, six feet high. The, the canal was completely filled. They brought this monster crab machine, cleaned it out. <laughs> the employees were literally using weed whackers to cut these huge grass that was so tall. It looks absolutely beautiful. And I have to make a shout out to the Public's Work Depart Depart Department. Mike Jazer, who led the team, Mike Numez, Dave Lavelle, Matt Mask, Mark Shuford, Kyle Cantor, Nikki Pierce, and Patrick Serafin, and Nan, of course, you as their leader, did a fantastic job. It looks incredible, and it's. I just want to say thank you for all the hard work of the city. In my lifetime, I have never seen anything like that. A team come out and do such a great job within seven days that something has been overgrown for 20 years. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. And then the last thing I have, Mayor, what was that? Sister, you should sing. It just felt like Yeah, sing. <laughs> Sorry. And then the last thing is, Gabby, I missed the meeting when you, you announced, but I just want to say that you know, you and I have been through a lot together, really. I mean, with the election and everything, I just wanna say what you've done with tech data in your career is absolutely amazing. And I am very proud to say you're my friend and that we are colleagues here on City Council. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And that is fantastic. Good luck, and I wish you all success. And then the last thing is don't forget, okay. celebrate Oldsmar fireworks. Grandsons are coming. See you there. Thank you, Mayor. There you go. All right. Nice report. <laughs> Council Member Norris. Um, I actually have a couple of art and medicine things to, to just talk about real briefly. First of all, if y'all haven't gone to the children's art exhibit at City Hall across the street, it's amazing. I mean, you look at some of this stuff, and these kids are more talented than <laughs> me, <laughs> a lot of adults I know. Um, so check that out. And Jeff, wrote, Jeff Rosenfeld wrote another great article on our new art project that's coming up. And so that was just in the last couple of days. But um, last week I went to a conference called Creating Healthy Communities, Arts Plus Medicine. And when you think about that, you're like, how does that even connect, Arts Plus Medicine? And it was a conference of, there were five different universities there, UF Gators, they're the, the driving force behind it, but UCF, University of Rhode Island, a bunch of them. Then there were federal agencies. I've never in my life seen at the same time on the same stage working collaboratively together the NEA and the CDC, National Endowment for the Arts and the Center for Disease Control. Hmm. And it's this new wave of this is new field that's been emerging in the last couple of years where instead of those of us that love art or those of the those people that are artists musicians are kind of like oh you guys are the foo foo people they're starting to realize that there are there are measurable health benefits to it so now there's funding to do mris on the the brains of children that have um, autism b before they encounter a cultural event and then after they encounter it. so we need quantitative things in order to be able to move forward in this field and it and it's so broad ranging it's anything from children to trauma to veterans there's a there was a bunch of people that were for the veterans um so many to all of us that have or might have to care for an aging parent with um dementia and and alzheimer's uh, there was one story where a woman could not figure out she couldn't get her father to take a shower anymore and he was in late stages of of alzheimer's and the music therapist did a mix tape. I say mix tape, but that dates me. But whatever they do now where they put music together, I don't know. What is it called, Gabby? Playlist. <laughs> Playlist. <laughs> that thing, yeah. On your phone. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that thing. Um, and now she dances. 
her father to the shower every night oh. and her father, mm. you know, I That's mean, awesome. things like that were, it, it was fascinating. It was a, a two day mm. conference and, and I learned so much and, and met so many people from all over the country. And so I just wanted to let y'all know that, that it, you know, the art that we're doing here in Oldsmar and the cultural events that we have here in Oldsmar, they're not just foo foo things. They're not just, they're, they're important. They're, they're important for our health. And I'm going to continue to follow through with a lot of the people that I met. And if I have any updates of cool stuff, I'll let y'all know. But I was, it was, it was fascinating. So. Cool. And we already gushed all over yeah. Gabby at the no last one. So I'm not going to gush anymore. No more gush. No more gush. <laughs> All right, thank you. I did uh, have a couple of things. One, I had the pleasure of uh, speaking uh, this evening at the top of the Bay Kiwanis, and so I want to thank them for their hospitality. I went and shared with them a little of what this council's working on for downtown. I was interested to find out that most of them, if not all of them, with the exception of one or two, didn't live in the city of Oldsmar. And so I'm going to give them a little plug. Nice group, doing good things for kids. And, uh, but they were meeting over at Rumbo's. And so they were excited to hear about the efforts that this council is working on, the city's working on for a, a downtown. I, I didn't, I could only get back in time to get over to the art exhibit for just one quick walkthrough. But I did earlier today go over and got to enjoy it. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of fun art over there. It's always fun to watch the parents out there with their kids and, mm. you know, taking pictures and doing all that. It's uh, good stuff. Uh, Dan, I do want to thank you uh, because a couple of us could not make it. Thank you and Paula for making over there on Saturday. Sure. Uh, greatly appreciate it. It's one of those things where you you come to appreciate the ability of everybody to be able to cover when they can for, mm -hmm. for uh, events. We have a lot of them. But uh, sorry that I missed it, but thank you for being there. Did want to mention, I think some of you probably have seen this on Facebook, if, if you're on Facebook, that the Opal Theater is back at it again. Back coming back strong. And so I said that I would give them a plug. Uh, they have rehearsals on Monday at 7.30 at the rec center. Uh, they're working on a, uh, a musical for The Lion King. And so that'll be coming soon. It's for ages eight and up to go participate. And anyone who's interested can call the rec center or visit the Opal Theater Facebook page for more information. All right. Celebrate Osmar, of course, is coming. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Are we all set? Everybody set on yeah. our commitments to it? Your tent shift. Yep. 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 Just a reminder that I'm going to the Institute for Elected Municipal Officials. Oh, that's right. So I won't be oh, there. But if you weren't on the list, you. Then, uh, try to stop by on Saturday night after the afternoon session. All right. But very good. Just making sure we're good to go. And last but certainly not least, man, that hockey rink looks good. Mm. One other thing. Quick. I just want to tell you real quick, I don't know if you know this, but the Opal Theater, I was actually in it. Were you really? Yeah. <laughs> you believe that? You guys didn't know that? What do you hey, mean? I was a superstar. I was superstar. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're dating ourselves. Now we're dating ourselves. And when I was in it, I had hair. Yeah. <laughs> that back when they had the community center over on uh, uh, yep. uh -huh. was it over there. Yeah. Uh -huh. What did you play? I don't remember. I got I got the newspaper hanging in my office. I'll bring it next time. <laughs> I, want I want photos. I want photos. We want photos. We want I want photos. photos with him with hair hockey rink. Hockey rink is looking great. Yeah. I go over, stop by, and I talk to uh, is John Johnny over there, who's their supervisor, I think, who's out on the site, but. Looking really good. Um, can't wait to the 12th. It's the 12th, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at Kathy, who always like, you know where you're supposed to be, right? Um, but it's going to be a good event. And uh, I can tell you, I hear about it more and more when I'm out and about. People will be like, hey, man, what's the deal on the hockey rink? Well, you know. And, and I can't lie. I was, I was earlier in the week. I was somewhere. And, I was pulling someone's leg about how we've created the system to keep the ice frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. With that note, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, Do I have a second? Second. Uh, no discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed. We're done.